So here's, here's the way this works. Now, I want you to have a look at this for a second. And do you remember how I told you in integration by parts, it's not as simple as just a rule because you have to make some kind of choice. Okay. Now I want to choose a U and I want to choose a DV on DX. What's guiding that choice? Why do I choose one to be one and the other? Yeah, that's right. What I'm looking for in particular, yeah, it's that green arrow. Do you remember the green arrow, right? If you don't have a green pen, get one so you can have a green arrow too. We'll have to talk about the same thing. Uh, the green arrow links V and DU, right? And if the integral of V DU is difficult, that sort of suggests to you, maybe I've made the wrong choice. Now I want you to watch for this, okay? Let's have a look here. Um, we're gonna do it twice, okay? Because I'm gonna try it U on this, dv here. And then we'll try it again and see what happens if you give it both worlds, okay? Okay. So option one, let's do this one in red. Option one, I'm just gonna use the order that's there. I'm gonna call this one U and this one V. Okay, so if I, sorry, dv, if I say u is equal to e to the negative x, right, um, and I say that therefore means I've got a derivative over here, that means this has to be cos x, what's the integral of cos x? It's just sine x, right? Okay, so you think, okay, remember I was looking for that green arrow, right? So you look at this and you think the integral of v du I don't know what to do with that, either the negative x sine x. That looks to me like it's just as bad as the problem I started with. So I look at that and think, okay, let's just put him to one side for the moment. Try the other option. So if I put uh, cos x up here, the derivative is negative sine x. That means I have no choice but to make this uh, e to the negative x. What's the integral of e to the negative x? Yeah, good, you do reverse chain rule and there you are. And then you're like, wait, ah, uh -huh. okay. Um, this doesn't look good. This is not promising because what I've got here, I mean, I know the signs are different because we've chosen a different order, but you have something which is basically the same integral. Do you notice that? E to the negative x sine x. Uh, actually, no, sorry, the signs, are, the signs are the same, right? You've got, I, no, 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 I was right the first time. You've got a double negative here, okay? In other words, whichever choice you make for u and dv, you seem to end up in this insoluble position, okay? But it's not insoluble, okay? What I want you to notice is that when you're working with trig derivatives, okay? Sine and cosine, they kind of flip back and forth between one another. There is a cycle of four because it goes from sine to cosine to sine. negative sine to negative cosine, which comes back to sine, right? So it, it goes around, but those signs sort of, signs, the pluses and the minuses, I can account for them. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play, use a bit of a, an algebraic trick. I'm going to call this integral i. I'm going to give it a name. Now usually it doesn't matter that we give it a name, but this will just make what I'm about to do easier to work with. So I'm going to call this capital I, and that'll help us with the occurrence relations next time. Okay. If I'm calling this integral i, uh, as you can see, it doesn't matter. I actually did the blue option first, but we'll, we'll get the same thing either way. So I'm going to go uh, uv, which is this. There's uv. Take away, what does integration by parts tell me? This is the I integral see. of v du. Do you see that? Okay. So because I've got my double negatives in there, this is going to look like so. Okay. So far, so good. Now, when I look at this, I think, okay, what do I do with this? And the answer for me is, well, that thing on the right-hand side, if I got that as my first question, I'd try that by integration by parts. Okay. Now, that should make you a little bit suspicious because you might think, well, hold on, aren't I just going to sort of end up going round and round in circles? And the beautiful answer is, if you keep a, a sort of whole view of this, you don't go round and round in circles. Watch what happens. Let's do integration by parts on this guy, right? U, d on dx, dv on dx, and v. Okay, which one would you like me to pick? Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to leave that as that, okay? I'm going to do this in a way that mirrors the way I did it the first time, right? Because I'm going to get a result which is kind of symmetrical from what I got here, okay? So if I call this one sine, that gives me a derivative, yep. And here, I'm going to get, uh, there's another minus sign there, done. Okay. Now, this looks weird because when you draw your green arrow, you're like, wait a second, wait a second. That was the original question, was it not? So let's see what happens when we do this. 
I've got this original UV there sitting out the front. Take away, and then integration of my cards begins again. Right? So I have a new UV, right? Uh, here it is. Does that make sense? So I've got negative e to the negative x sine x. There's the new UV. Take away the integral of v du. Yeah? Which in this case is negative e to the negative x cos x dx, close bracket. Now usually it's a bad sign <laughs> if you try and approach a question and then you end up with something that ends up similar to the original question in your answer, okay? But here, it's exactly what I want. Because watch what happens when the signs unfold, okay? Let's just get rid of, there's too many negatives flying around at the moment, so I'm a bit confused. So here I've got a double negative, yep, so that's plus. And then here I've got one, two, three negatives, right? So this comes up as one negative. Now I could then write integral of e to the negative x cos x dx. But right at the beginning, I gave that a label. I called it i, the integral. Okay? Now what's beautiful about this is, even though there's i's on both sides, that's okay. This is just an equation I'm solving for i, aren't I? So I'm going to add i to both sides, which means now there's two of them over here. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to factor out, sorry, it's a minus. I'm going to factor out an e to the negative x because that's um, in both of them. And I might as well put it in a, a more useful order, like that. Okay? And now if what I want is actually just i, I'm just going to divide. Okay? Um, and I actually should have added the c here because that's where I actually integrated. Okay? Now what's really nice about this is that Again, it's like, really? Is that what you would have expected? And the answer is, well, if you just go ahead and verify, okay, there was what I got, right? And you just have to use chain rule here, and it just kind of beautifully pans out, okay? So that was a bit of an unexpected side effect, that when you do integration by parts, something that it sort of hands to you ends up also needing to be done by integration by parts. And recurrence relations, like I said, it sort of pushes that to another degree, but we'll see that later on. Okay? So do not lose heart. Remember I said to you, choose your u and your dv on the basis of this. Okay? But just because it looks awful doesn't mean you're completely you know, up the creek without a paddle. This, we might still be able to work with it, especially when you've got trig here. Right? They're going to flip back and forth and you're going to get this situation frequently. Okay?